انا محمد علي محمد السلام عليكم brothers and sisters we send our condolences to our present imam and the muslim ummah on the occasion of the shahada the martyrdom of imam ali amir al mu'minin alayhi salam last night we spoke about some of the historical events that led up to the uh, the, the uh, assassination the killing of imam ali alayhi salam in the month of ramadan in the year 40 after Hijra. Tonight, inshallah, we'll speak about some of the characteristics of the Imam alayhi salam with regards to especially the members of his community. Wait a couple of minutes for the young guys to come in. We spoke last night about the, the justice of Imam Ali alayhi salam and that one of the aspects that people opposed him on was just how just and how uncompromising he was when it came to the rights of people. He, gave people equally regardless of their status or their prestige or reputation or any other factor and he tried to deal with everyone as fairly as possible inshallah tonight we'll look at a few incidents from the life of imam ali alayhi salam and see what we can learn from these incidents and really it's, they give us an insight into the amazing personality of imam ali alayhi salam one of them he as the khalifa he writes to one of his uh, premiers in, a, in a, another town he says, He says to this person that, look, I can, I can have as many, as much wealth and as much, uh, you know, anything that I wish because I have control of the entire Muslim Ummah. I could get the best types of luxury, clothing, food, wealth, houses, whatever it is that I could wish for. But how would I ever be content to be called Amir al Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers, when I do not join the believers in the hardships that they experience? If I am the leader of the Mu'mineen, then if there is a Mu'min who is poor, I need to taste and experience that poverty. If there's a Mu'min that is hungry, then I need to experience that hunger, that thirst, that difficulty. That whatever it is that a Mu'min is experiencing under my 
in my government, if I am the leader of the Mu'mineen, then I need to experience that as well. And because of this, we see that the Imam السلام, was very active in the interventions that he made in his own community. For example, we have uh, a narration in one of our reliable books that Imam Ali alayhi is, uh, is walking in, in the city and he sees, or in the markets of the town, and he sees a, uh, a maid, like a, a servant girl, a young girl, who's crying on the side of the, the road. So again, imagine that you are you know, in a position of authority, whether he was the Khalifa of the time or he was one of the, you know, the main companions of the Prophet, a person who's got so many different tasks and occupations, who's got such a great status, and yet when he sees a little girl crying on the side of the road, he stops and he asks what is wrong. And she says to him that my family that I work for, they gave me a dirham, like a dollar, to go and buy some, uh, some dates. And when I got back home, they didn't like the types of dates that I bought. I went back to the shopkeeper and he refused to give me a, a refund or an exchange for the dates that I actually wanted. Now the Imam salam takes the girl with him back to this shopkeeper and he says to him that why don't you give her back these dates. Now this man was a, a rough man, you know, a man without, uh, you know, akhlaq and so he, uh, he either like, swears or he hits the Imam and it seems it was in Kufa and it's here. in fact it was when he was the Khalifa. So people rush to him and say, Hada Amirul Mu'mineen, this is Amirul Mu'mineen. And the person, imagine how he feels now, this arrogant person who's just, who's refused to give this girl back her rights. And he struck a man who was coming to help her, realizes this is actually Amirul Mu'mineen, who could have him executed within minutes. So he absolutely freezes and he begins to beg the Imam for forgiveness. And he says, Ya Amir al please whatever, please just be satisfied with me. And the Imam says, Ma arbani anka in aslahta amrak. That what will make me pleased with you is if you fix your affairs. Don't act like this with people. Give them their due rights. This is just one example of how the Imam السلام, lived his life, even as the Khalifa, even as Amir al Mu'mineen. He had so much respect and attention for the rights of every single human being, that they were treated fairly. Even if it was a, a young servant girl who was probably African, who was probably the lowest socioeconomic status of that time, and yet the Imam made sure that he would stop and he would make sure that her right was given to him. A similar example, when he walks past and he sees a homeless older man sitting on the, you know, on the street homeless, and he says, what's, what's this man's story? like?" We Muslims are, you know, we have wealth now, we have this. Why is this man homeless on the street begging? And they say, he's not a Muslim, don't worry. He says, what do you mean he's not a Muslim? Whether he's Christian, Jewish, whatever he may be, he has rights, and his rights must be given to him. And again, the Imam makes sure, follows through until the rights of this Christian or Jewish man are given to him. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Salla ala this story I've told you many times, but it's a really beautiful story that Imam Ali alayhi salam is walking again in Kufa towards the end of his life and he sees a woman who is carrying a very heavy load on her back and there are children with her and she's really struggling. So imagine a woman who's got kids running around, they're crying, they're whatever, they're mucking, causing a muck and she is carrying a heavy load through the street and her situation looks very difficult. So the Imam says, let me help you with your load at least. So he takes you know, the water jug, the heavy or the whatever she was carrying, and he takes it home for her. And when he reaches there, he says, what's your story? And she doesn't know who he is. So she, he, she says, Ali sent my husband to one of the battle fronts, and he died. And Ali has left me a widow with children, forced to work as a maid in people's homes. Now the Imam says, what can I do to help you today? Do you want me to look after the children? Do you want me to cook for you? What do you want me to do? She says, start the fire. And so the Imam Salam starts the fire in the house of this woman so that she can cook. And when he is, you know, he's sort of stoking the fire, he feels the heat. 
And he begins to speak to himself. And he says, taste the fire, experience it, Abai. If you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these children or this woman have a right upon you, then you are going to taste the real fire of hell on the day of judgment. This is someone who's ma'asul. This is someone who did every single thing he could to prevent or stop any war that ever occurred within the Muslim Ummah and even outside it. And yet, this is how self-critical he is, that he's telling himself, if this woman and her children have a right upon you, then you are going to taste the fire of hell. Then he, you know, he looks after her children the rest of the day while she cooks, and he goes home that night and he can't sleep. He's anxious, he's sleepless, he's turning this way and that way, and as soon as it comes close to Fajr, he fills up a bag with food and whatever other supplies he can, and he is carrying it through Kufa. And it's very heavy, so one of his companions sees him and he says, Give me, I will carry your burden for you. And the Imam looks at him and he says, But who will carry my burden for me on the Day of Judgment? And he goes to this woman and he spends the day again helping her until one of her neighbors. Uh, you know, and in fact, as he feeds the children, you know, he's feeding them with his own hands one by one. You know, he's breaking the food and he's feeding these toddlers, these young children with his own hands. And he's saying, please, Whatever happens on the day of judgment, bear witness that I, you know, that you drop whatever right you have upon me. To a young child, and he's the Khalifa, he's Amir al muminin at the prime of his Khilafah and power and all of this. Really, the personality of Imam Ali alayhi salam absolutely unmatched. You can't find this anywhere. No leader in history, no role model. This is why people are so bewildered by the personality of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allah. One of his companions narrates that while he was, you know, while I was in the city, we don't know again, was in Medina, was in Kufa, I saw a man who was carrying a heavy water skin on his back and a sort of like a basket of food in his hands. And he didn't see me, I was just following him, and I heard him saying these words Allahumma waliyu al mu'mineen. وَإِلَاهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَجَارُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Ya Allah, O oh, the one who looks after the believers. يَقْبَلْ قُرُبَاتِ اللَّيْلَ Ya Allah, accept these deeds that I'm doing in order to get close to you, in order to gain your pleasure. فَمَا أَمْسَيْتُ أَمْلِكُ سِوَى مَا فَسَّ صَحْفَتِي وَغَيْرَ مَا يُوَارِيهِ Ya Allah, you, I bet with, you know that I don't own anything except what is in this contained, this sack of food and the clothes that I am wearing. فَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ أَنِّي مَنَعْتَهُ نَفْسِي مَعَ شِدَّةِ صَوَبِي And you know that as much as I need these things, I have deprived myself of them. And I've come out in the middle of the night to give it to those who are just as needy of it as I am. أَطْلُبُ الْقُرُبَةَ إِلَيْكَ غَنَمًا Allah, I just want the proximity to you. اللَّهُمَّ فَلَا تَخْلُقْ وَجْهِي وَلَا تَمْدَ دَعْوَتِي Ya Allah, do not turn my supplication back upon me on this night. And when the man approaches, he finds out that, of course, this is Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. So when the Imam alayhi salam was struck on that 19th, on the Fajr of the 19th night, 19th day, in Kufa, he was carried to his home and he was visited regularly by his, his family, was around him, companions are visiting him regularly. So a doctor comes, you know, an expert doctor at the time comes and he tells the family that there is no way to save the Imam Ali salam, that the, the poison has penetrated into the bloodstream and that the Imam alayhi salam is not going to survive this injury. What does the Imam do in this situation when it comes to the person who killed him, the person who basically has killed him? He says that don't let him go, keep him in captivity, but make sure that he has food, that he has water, and that he's not abused by anyone or harmed by anyone. If I survive, I'll decide what to do. But if I die, then 
just like the normal punishment. If you kill a person, you are killed. He killed a person, not because it's me, but he killed a person. He needs to be punished in that way. But do not mutilate his body. And do not do anything in excess of the rightful Islamic punishment for such a person. Even in that moment, the Imam was so careful that justice was upheld. A person who struck him with a sword over his head, a poisoned sword in the middle of Salah. And yet this is how the Imam reacts. In those final days, the companions of the Imam would seek permission just to see the Imam one last time. One of them is al Asqad ibn Nubata who says that the people were gathered around the house of Imam Ali crying, wailing. And after a while the Imam is tired, he's exhausted. He sends Imam Hassan to go out and announce to the people that please leave, let the Imam rest. Asqad, who is a close companion of the Imam, he couldn't leave. He just couldn't get himself to leave knowing that he may never see the Imam salam again. So he says to Imam al Hassan, please let me just go in and just say my salam one final time to the Imam. He says, I went in and I could see that the Imam had been bleeding again and that his face was so yellow and it was wrapped with a yellow rag and I couldn't see, I couldn't really tell you what was more yellow, his face or the bandage that it was covered with. So I threw myself onto him. I was kissing the Imam. I was crying and he says to me, لا تبكي يا أصبر. Don't cry, يا أصبر. فإنها والله الجنة. For surely by Allah it is to paradise that I am heading. And Asbah says, جُعِلْتُ فِدَاكَ May I be sacrificed for you. I know for sure that you are going to Jannah. وَإِنَّمَا أَبْكِي لِفَقْدِكَ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ But I cry because I am going to lose you, Amir al Because the Muslim community is going to lose you. It's famously narrated that in these nights, so you know, one night passed, and there were people in Kufa who were used to getting visits at night from an anonymous person. One of them was a blind man. It says that every night someone would come, especially in Shahar Ramadan and so on, and would leave some food and have a chat to me and give me some water. And on the night of the 20th of Ramadan, no one came. So I was very surprised and I began to ask. And as I asked, I, they told me that, you know, we don't know who that is, but Imam Ali has, I heard the news that Imam Ali has been struck. And he realized who this was. Many children in Kufa were used to getting visits from the Imam Ali Again, in the, you know, in the, in an anonymous way or in whatever way that he could. You know, he used to give wasiyah to people that make sure that you sit an orphan next to you, that you, you know, show them compassion, rub your hand over their head, give them a gift, smile at them, give them whatever it is because Rasulullah gave me this wasiyah. That one of the signs of a mu'min is that they honor and they care for an orphan. So these children, they heard, you know, that the, that the doctor had said that if the imam drinks milk, then the pain of the poison would be reduced as it spreads through his bloodstream. So the narration says that these children come with whatever containers they had. They went and bought milk, they went and did whatever they could, and they waited outside the door of the Imam salam, wanting to relieve some of the pain of their Imam salam. Another one of the companions, Habib, he says that I went to see Amir al Mu'mineen, and after a while, seeing him in that state, I began to cry. And he says to me, Don't cry. If you could see what I could see, Habib, you would not cry. Habib says, وَمَا الَّذِي تَرَى يَا أَمِيرُ And what is it that you see, Amir al He says, يَا حَبِيب أَرَى مَلَائِكَةُ السَّمَا يَا حَبِيب I see the angels of paradise in the heavens. وَالنَّبِيِّينَ بَعْضُهُمْ فِي أَثْرِ And the prophets lined up, one after the other. وَقُوفًا إِلَيَّ أَنْ يَتَلَقَّوْنِي Waiting, standing at the door of this world of Akhirah to meet with Amir al-Mu'mineen. وَهَذَا أَخِي This is my brother, Muhammad Rasool Allah. Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, جَالِسٌ عِنْدِي يَقُولُ Sitting next to me, saying, أقدر فإن أمامك خير لك مما أنت فيه. Come to us, Ya Ali, for what is in front of you is better than where you are now. And Habib says, I stayed with the Imam alayhi salam. 
until he passed away.
Şimdi bamlum abi Şimdi bamlum abi Ya canım bu
Oh, 